But God put something on my heart because however long we live, we must be thankful. In the Old Testament from the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. And, and this is, is for me today. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. When you have found it, would you please stand as we honor God's word together. Hear now these words that are recorded. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. I'm going to stop right there. Listen to this again. All of us in here today who are the people of God, the text says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word and let all the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. David is certainly one of my favorite characters in the Bible. And in this text, David, who always shows his human side in the scriptures, and we just don't see the good side of David, but we see also the side of David that sometimes was not pleasing in the sight of God, acknowledged in his life how thankful he was to God. And David's life was not without trouble. And sometimes those of us who come to church or those of us in the Christian church, and particularly new people, think that once I give my life to God, that somehow my life is going to be trouble-free. David had to thank God because he understood that even though he was a man that served God and someone who had deep and abiding faith in God, understood that, that his life was not free from the troubles of life. David, brothers and sisters, had some difficult and disappointing days in his life. David had tragedies. David had his own share of valleys. David had mountains that he had to climb. David had his own sad days. David had children problems. But when David began to think about his relationship with God, when he remembered all of God's blessings in his life, when he was a shepherd and God protected him, when he fought Goliath and God was with him, when King Saul tried to kill him and God shielded him, when he sinned and messed up, but God showed him mercy. When all of his enemies came against him and God caused them to stumble and fall. That is why David said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. It's easy, brothers and sisters, to focus on the bad stuff that happens to us in life. It's easy to get discouraged and depressed about it. It's easy to focus on the things that happen in your life that are contrary to what you wanted to see go on in your life. It's easy to focus on the difficulties, but, but David is telling us that we ought not to look at the bad stuff, but, but we ought to be thankful for all the blessings that God bestows upon us in life. When we look at all of our good days compared to our bad days, we ought to be thankful. When we look at all of our mess ups and we are still here today, we ought to be thankful. When we look at all the jobs we have had and those we may have lost, but we 
Why should we thank him? Why do we come to church every Sunday? And why do we come and we praise God? There's so much that we ought to be thankful for. If my week was bad, can I still thank God? If I receive bad news, can I still thank God? If my finances are not where they should be, can I still praise and thank God? Well, brothers and sisters, I contend there's a lot of things we can be thankful for. First of all, we can be thankful for God's great sacrifice. For Paul said, but God demonstrated his great love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ yes. died for us. Yes, he did. Now, he didn't die for us while we were righteous or because we were so good. Yes. But the Bible says that died for us. Yes. So I began to think, Durham, we began to think about the things that you have done in your life, but yet, God died for you. That while I was messed up, God died for me. Yes. While I was still doing things that were disobedient to the will of God, yet he died for me. When he died on Calvary, he died for you and me because he already knew you and he already knew what kind of life you would live because he's omnipotent and omnipresent and the Anthony, can I use you? 
And then Daryl. Y'all just come up here. Amen. Because I, I didn't know the whole story about Daryl. And as he's been working here, he tells me a little more each week. Now, I don't think he thought I could handle it all at one time. Amen. So, so he keeps telling me more and more. And I'm saying to myself, really? And then he told me what caused Anthony to go to the service. And I can't tell y'all that one. <laughs> but watch this. When you think about all of your bad stuff, and God says, Daryl, I can't save you based on what you have done. Because if I try to save you based on what you have done, remember what the Bible says? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. So then, if I try to save you based on your sins, come on, Mario. I don't know y'all. Amen. Come on, Kenny. Let me use you too. Amen. Amen. Okay. He said, listen, I can't save you based on your sins. He said, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover you. And i got to cover your stuff in order to save you. But not only am I going to cover you, but now I'm going to give you my grace. And all you got to do to get it is just have faith in me. So I can't save you based on your works, but I certainly can save you based on my works. So, so if you have faith in me, then I'm going to cover you with my grace. And notice what it said. My grace to you is undeserved favor. So that I'm going to place the favor of God on your life. Now, other folk are going to remember all the stuff you did before church, amen. But I'm going to cover you, oh praise God, by my grace, amen. And all you got to do is just believe in me, and then I'm going to put my favor over you, amen, so that no weapon formed against you shall be able now to prosper, why? Because I'm now covering you with my favor, amen. And brothers and sisters, when you begin to think about the fact that God covers us with his grace, Yes, and because yes. of that, we get the favor of yes. God. Not because of what we have done, not because of what we are doing. It's because of the grace of God. And if I have enough faith in God, then God's grace will cover me. And God's grace will save me. That means deliverance. God's grace will deliver me, even from myself and even from sin. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, when I begin to think about that, Think about what you did last Monday. And then think about what you did last Tuesday. Then think about what you did on Wednesday. Nobody knows but you. Think about what you did on Thursday. And then you think about what you did on Friday. And then think about all the sins you committed on yesterday. Okay, would you be worthy enough to still be called a child of God based on the stuff that you have done? But in spite of you, the favor of God was still upon you. And by his grace now, you are now saved. So when I began to think about what I did last Monday, what I did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and yesterday, and still the fact that I'm saved and still a child of God, that's enough for me to thank God for it. And I'm still under the table of God. And so all the stuff that I have done in my life. So why can I come to church? Thankful. See, brothers and sisters, I don't need the quad to get me going. That's right. That's right. I don't need for me to get myself going. The fact <laughs> that he's extended his grace to me. Now I know some of y'all think I ain't ever. 
everything that I should be, but that's all right. Because I'm never going to be what you think I ought to be. But I don't have to prove nothing to you.
every time, God, I get a chance. I'm going to thank you. And watch this. I'm going to let you go. You don't have to wait to do it at church. <laughs> but every opportunity you get, be thankful. Brother, I know you have been through a terrible time. Still here, and you can be thankful because God brought you through it. I know somebody else in here, you've been through a lot. I know you're going through something right now, but you can thank God for the fact that He blessed you to have your mother as long as you had her, and you can be thankful. You can look around and be thankful. Thank you, brothers. Just close your eyes. And I just want you to, in prayer, just think about how good God has been to you. you owe God. Stop being thankful. God, thank you. God, thank you. God, I lost my child, but I still have a roof over my head. And I know, God, you're going to provide for me. There may be somebody in here today. And I want to share this with you. There's nothing that you can do in life that is so bad that God cannot redeem you from it. So if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, I want to give you the opportunity today to make him Lord of your life. Because even you have so much to be thankful for. So if you have not made him Lord of your life, I want to invite you to come and to give God your hand. There may be somebody else who's already in relationship with God but you would like to become a part of the Barnes family. I want to invite you to come and, and join this assembly. There may be a third person you deserve baptism, or you may want to rededicate your life back to Christ. I invite you to come. If you don't want to come down front, one of the ministers will meet you right where you are. You just raise your hand. Thank you. David said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For 53 years, he's been good. How about you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.